Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents... The Land of the Living Dead, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder... Come with me. This is the tale of ancient Chicota mysticism, the drama of strange terrors and weird deaths. Involved in this adventure of the land of the living dead are Dr. Julian English, renowned archaeologist and paleontologist, and his daughter Judith. On the far side of Russian Hill in San Francisco, sits the English home, standing alone in a garden of neglected shrubbery and vine-entangled trees. About the whole place is a tall, dilapidated hedge that cuts off the house from the rest of the world. But let Captain Friday go on with the story. We pick up this business on a certain dreary night with a fog hanging in a sinister wet blanket over the city. In the distance, the foghorns bellow mournfully, but all other noises are muffled to a weird, indistinct muttering. Skip Turner and I, moving stealthily along a residential street, now and again caught glimpses of other beings, but only as vague, indistinct phantoms. In this fog, walking with us was the essence of sudden death. Danger breathed on the backs of our necks, and every step we came nearer to Dr. English's home, the more pronounced it became. Creepy, huh, Captain? We're almost there. Don't get separated from me in this fog. Yeah. Hey, Capper, why didn't we take a taxi? Why sneak up on Dr. English's place like a couple of footpads? Like I told you, Skip, Dr. English's son, Robert, just got back from Chile. Apparently with some information that scared the doctor silly. He says it's dynamite. Well, I still don't see what that's got to do with us sneaking in at midnight. For well, one thing, he wanted to be sure we weren't trailed. Hey, you think somebody's tailing us? Yeah, we've doubled back on our track twice. Might should stop him. Yeah, and this fog's thick as pea soup. Hey, what you think this dangerous information is that Robert brought back? Maybe I found a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? <laughs> you may not be far off, Skip. Why, what you mean? I got an idea that Dr. English and Robert have been playing a pretty dangerous game. Before Robert left, the doctor told me he was going on a mission into the jungle country of Chile to look for a tremendous fortune, supposedly buried in some lost city. Well, he's an archaeologist, ain't he? What's so dangerous about looking for a lost city? Yeah, there's something in the wind, something apparently pretty big. Oh, I know, but... Hey, what's that? Well, it may be a dog howl. Then again, it may not. Well, then somebody is tailing us. Well, there's no telling. The English house is behind this hedge. The gate's just ahead. Should we double back again? No use. Too close now. Come on. Okay. No, I still don't see what danger there is in looking for a town that nobody can't find. It seems this lost city is guarded by an ancient Indian tribe, the Chakotas. Oh, I get it. They don't want nobody fooling with their buried treasure. And they're ready to knock off the first fellow that tries, huh? In capsule form, that's about right. Well, say, did his sister Judith go along with Robert? No, Dr. English wouldn't let her. Said the trip was too dangerous. You know, I could go for that little lady, boss. The way she makes a dress important is a sight to see. <laughs> You've said that before. Here's the gate. It's open. Come on. I can't get that phony dog howl out of my mind. I... Hey, there it is again. Yeah. Come on, it's Judah's voice. Yeah. Now get the door. Ah, it's locked. Hello, Dr. English. Hello. Skip, there's a window just to the left of the door. See if it's unlocked. I just tried it. No go. Then smash it in. Look out for glass. Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Stay close behind. Yeah, I'm in. Come on, Skip. Yeah, right behind you, Captain. Yeah, there. Hey, Duck, Skip. Somebody shooting us from the hall. Can you see who it is? No, just a shadow. There, he's moving into the light. Hey, it's Dr. English. Hi there, Dr. English. Don't shoot. It's Captain Friday and Skip Turner. Step out in the hall where I can see you. If you make one false move, I'll shoot. It's really us, Doctor. What's going on here? Captain Friday. Thank heaven it's you. We heard a shot, and then we crashed in the window. Was that you shooting, Dr. English? No, no, I don't know who it was. Robert's been murdered. Uh, what's that? Murdered? Here, I better take a look. No, no, it's no use, Captain. He's dead. Shot through the heart. Judith was with him. Where is she now? She fainted. She's with the housekeeper. Skip, see if Judith's all right. Okay. And Skip. Yeah? When she feels up to it, bring her in here. Okay. Now, Doctor, I'll call the police. No, Captain Friday. 
We can't call the police. Why not? I'm involved with forces that go beyond the help of the police. Let's see here, Doctor. It's no use, Captain. I've lost Robert. I'm not going to take a chance on losing Judith. Oh, come now, Doctor. You're wrought up. You can't let someone walk into your home and commit murder without going to the police. We've got to take some action. I haven't the heart for it, Captain. That my rapping at the door of the unknown should have brought this tragedy on us. What do you mean, rapping at the door of the unknown? Oh, it's a long, involved story, Captain. And as it turns out, a tragic one. Huh? Well, perhaps you better begin by telling me just what happened here tonight. Well, it isn't all clear to me yet. We, that is, Judith and Robert and I finished dinner about half an hour ago. Yeah. After dinner, I left Judith and Robert in the library talking. Suddenly, I heard a shot. Judith screamed. Yes, we heard that from the street. I rushed down to find both my children on the floor. Robert shot through the heart, Judith unconscious. I left Judith with the housekeeper, grabbed my revolver, and rushed out into the hall just as the window crashed in. Did you hear anything just before Judith screamed? No. I don't believe I did. Why? Uh, just as we reached your house, we heard a blood-curdling howl of a dog. Now, yeah, listen. There it is again. Captain, what sort of a dog would howl like that? Sounds like a werewolf's cry. I don't think it was a dog, Doctor. The moment the howl had died out, there came the shot and Judith's scream. A signal. A signal, the cry of the pack. You mean that a gang is responsible for Robert's death? Gang? Roll all the gangs in the underworld of San Francisco, Chicago, and New York together, and you wouldn't have an organization one-tenth so vicious, so dangerous as the Brothers to the Living Dead. Brothers to the Living Dead? It's an odd name. It's an ancient Chicota priest clan which still exists in Sacred City. A sacred city hidden somewhere in the jungles of Chile. Mm, so that was Robert's mission? Yes. If the mission had been satisfactory... Robert and I had planned to invite you and Skip to join us with Judith and search for the sacred city. I think our job right now is to run down a murderer. <laughs> no, here's Judith now. Father, father, they murdered Robert. Here I am, dear. Now. They murdered Robert. Now, now, Judith, now, now. But Bob is gone. Yes, Judith, Bob's gone. But I'm afraid it isn't going to end there. You, you mean we may be next? There is danger. Especially when the brothers to the living dead discover they didn't accomplish their purpose when they murdered Robert. The Dakota priest? Father! Judith, I thought you understood. Understand? Yes, I understand. Look what I found inside the neck of my blouse when I came to. Judith! What in heaven's name is that? A sacred jade, Captain Friday. A small Gila monster carved in green jade. The Gila monster. Symbol of the ancient brotherhood. Don't you see what it means? They've got every member of this household marked for death. Oh, that howl. Father, I, I heard it just before the girl stepped into the library and leveled her gun at Robert. Hey, a girl. Did you say the killer was a girl? I saw her as plainly as I see you three men. A beautiful girl. Beautiful except for her hateful, blazing green eyes. Uh, you want me to go, Captain? No, no, it might be... Nonsense, nonsense. We're making ourselves hysterical. I'll answer the door. Here, Doctor. Better let me go. Skip, duck out through the broken window and keep an eye peeled. Yeah. Coming, coming. Good evening. Why do you keep me waiting outside your door like this? And who are you? I will tell you nothing. I must see Robert English. I think you'd better come in. I wondered when you were going to find your manners. I think you should explain your mission to Robert's father, Dr. English. Bozzy, is not Robert English here? Doctor, this woman came to see Robert. I am from La Jolla. La Jolla, Chile, if you please. La Jolla? Why, that's where... Did you know Robert? Did I know him? What do you mean, Miss English? Did I know him? My son was murdered half an hour ago. Murdered? Robert murdered? They got him too. Oh, Dr. English, I am sorry. What do you mean, they got him too, Mrs... Uh... Santos. Mrs. Roberto Santos. Mrs. Santos? What did you mean? Dr. English, how much do you know of your son's activities in Chile? Enough to recognize the significance of this jade. Look. The symbol. The jade Gila monster. Exactly. The girl who shot Robert to death left this little token. Girl? Tell me, was she lithe and dark? And did she have wild green eyes? Did she? Yes, yes, savage green eyes. Tula again. It is Tula. Look here, Mrs. Santos. Before we exchange any more confidences, uh, supposing we exchange credentials. Yes, Mrs. Santos. Just where do you fit into the picture? I do not like your attitude, gentlemen. I have come here as Robert's friend. All the way from La Jolla, I came to protect him from the brothers to the living dead. Don't misunderstand, Miss Santos. But my son was murdered tonight. I have reason to be on my guard. I do understand, Doctor. 
I too have lost much. My own husband, as did your son, walked too near the terrible secret of the La Jolla jungle. Your husband? Mrs. Santos, how did he know what lay in the jungle of La Jolla? Like you, he was an archaeologist. Not Roberto Santos, the archaeologist. Not the Santos. See, si, of course. Mrs. Santos, you are indeed a friend. I understand. Captain Friday, Dr. Roberto Santos actually saw the hidden storehouse where the vanished treasure has lain hidden since the white man first invaded Chile. Mm -hmm. But the sight cost him his life. I can very well see why you want to drop the whole matter, Doctor. No use putting more lives in jeopardy. And that's exactly what would happen if we went to Chile. If you go to Chile, of course you are going to Chile. No, I'm finished. Robert's death has been too much. I'm going to drop the whole matter. Well, that will not do, Doctor. The priests know exactly how much you know. You will all die one by one. I know. I have been fighting them all these years since my husband's death. You think they intend to murder us all? I know it. Doctor, under the circumstances, we've got to call in the police. Yes, the police. We'll have to have them for Robert. You poor innocent Americans. Do you think the police can help you now? The yeah, police have quite a reputation, Mrs. Santos. Reputation, is it, Captain Friday? What do your police know about the mystic rites of the sacred little monster? How would they cope with this age-old nest of sinister wisdom? Then what are we to do? Act, Miss English. Act. Act promptly. Fight them with their own weapons. If you're suggesting we all turn into a rival gang of gunmen, Mrs. Santos, I don't it think... It is not murder, Captain Friday. What I say you must do it is your future existence. Their lives or yours. What in heaven's name have I brought down on this household? Judith. Judith, my oh, daughter. There, there, Dad. How could you know? I think we should see it through. If we've got to die, at least we can die fighting. It is tragic that you should be caught in this net, Miss English. But your fate from now on is with mine. But why go to La Jolla if that's where the danger lies? Why not stay with civilization where there's some organized force for protection? You do not understand, Capitan Friday. In La Jolla, there is a very strong group of people who are beginning to understand a little of the mystery of the La Jolla jungle. We are learning to fight the Brotherhood with its own weapon. We battle mysticism with mysticism. In La Jolla, you will find protection such as you will not find anywhere else in the world. I think I'd be satisfied to live and die in La Jolla. What a wealth of archaeological material. While La Jolla holds a solution to the ancient mysteries of the world, I'd gladly spend the last years of my life there. But Father, Mrs. Santos, we can't simply ignore Robert's murder. The police must be informed. I understand that, Miss English. But need we mention the true cause of his death? Well, then what will we say? Well, we've got to call the police, of course. But, Dr. English, if you feel we will endanger the lives of others by reporting it as murder, we can say Robert was shot by a burglar who escaped. You think it necessary to hide the truth, Mrs. Santos? The only course. Otherwise, it would prevent us from moving secretly. Moving secretly? Just that. When we leave San Francisco for La Jolla, we do not want all our enemies aboard the ship that carries us south. And, Doctor, if you leave the disposal of Robert's body to me, I think I can give the police an acceptable story. Thank you, Captain Friday. And if you don't mind, I'd like you and Skip to stay the rest of the night with us. Right. That is very wise, Dr. English. The Brotherhood does not rest. It may strike again, even tonight. <laughs> The Brotherhood of the Living Dead, whose tentacles reach out from the sacred city somewhere in the vastness of the jungles of Chile, has spoken. Their language was the language of violence, sudden death, and young Robert English, just home from an archaeological mission in the South American jungle, was the victim. Because of this hovering menace, Captain Friday and Skip Turner have taken up residence to protect the father, Dr. English, expert in the ways of ancient mysticism, and his daughter, Judith. It's three o'clock in the dead of morning. Three o'clock. Chimes at night remind me of dead things. Getting edgy, Skip? Well, ain't you? Setting here in the dark, screaming women, werewolf howls in the fog, the Gila monsters and sudden death. Forget it. Yeah, I'm glad Dr. English asked us to stay here tonight. The closer we stick together, the better it pleases me. Hey, we're going to see this through, ain't we? What do you think? Hold it. Hmm? What's the matter? I heard someone bump a chair down the hall. Mm, footsteps. Hide behind these curtains. Here, take this cane. 
I'll slip down the hall and try to scare him up, whoever he is. If he comes in here, let him have it. Ask questions afterwards. Maybe I better go with you. Don't argue. Stay here. Everyone, turn on the light. Skip's disappeared. Here I am, Captain. What is it? Ah, uh, they've got Skip, too. He's gone. Oh, no, Captain Friday, no. Captain Friday? Father, what is it? I heard someone shouting. Father, you're white as a ghost. What is it? Skip. They've got Skip Turner. But where could they take him? Well, let's look. Let's help Captain Friday search. Stand still. Listen. Someone in the hall. It is I, Mrs. Santos. I heard the cry. I understand. Who is it this time? Skip. They've carried him away. My poor friend. But what happened, Captain? What happened? We heard noises in the hall. I posted Skip behind the curtains up by the door. I slipped down the hall expecting to see who it was. My son, you are courageous. No, I did exactly what they wanted. Left Skip alone. There was a struggle. There is the cane. The carpet is dragged and rumpled. Hush. Hmm? There's someone else in this room. I heard a noise. Yes. Yes, listen. There it is again. There is someone behind the Davenport. Yeah. Doc. Yeah. It's Skip. Here, give me a hand. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's it. Now, lower him on the lounge. Yeah. Skip. Skip, speak to me. He can't speak. He's bleeding internally. Can I speak, eh? Here, let me look at him. Oh, I have seen this work before. Come, Captain Friday, hold his shoulders perfectly still. You, Dr. English, lift his head a trifle. Hold it firm. Yes, that way. Now, Judith, help me pry open his jaws. You know what you're doing. I assure you I do. There we are. Oh, how terrible. A stick of polished bamboo thrust down his throat. My friends, our foes are old in wickedness. He would have been dead in another half hour. We, we must have a doctor. There is no longer any danger. He will be all right in a few moments. See, he's already beginning to rally. Mrs. Santos, we can't go on like this. We can't spend the rest of the night without protection. Quite right, Doctor. I'm going to try to reach Captain O'Leary. We'll have a guard thrown about this place and a couple of good old Irish cops parked right here in this room. Please, please, you must listen to me. My friends, I am going to show you why we must not bring outsiders into this affair. This great globe on the pedestal in the corner, it is crystal, eh, Doctor? Why, why yes, a crystal ball from the Kang Ho Monastery. Good. Captain Friday... Please turn off the lights. Right. Now, gather around the crystal. Now watch. Watch closely. Why, why, it's dark, and yet the crystal is aglow with light. For one moment now, we will peer behind the curtain. The curtain that separates the now from that which has been and that which is to be. You will not believe me. See for yourselves. Figures in the glass. It's, it's Robert. Robert. And he stands over a bearded man lying in a pool of blood. Look. He points to us and to the figure on the ground. His lips are moving. He's alive. Robert's alive. Robert is not alive. From another world, he sends this message. Father, you must carry on for us. The power which lit the world in ancient days... Is being desecrated in the hands of the high priest of the temple of the sun. The fate of mankind is in the balance. He bids me say the monster is seen to ride again with the sun. Move with utmost caution. That is all. The crystal's dark. Now, my friends, do you understand why we must carry on? Mr. Santos, I don't get it. How did you do that? Do not ask how, my son. Be content that you have seen. We understand only a very little of such things. And that little is infinitely more dangerous than you may suppose. Well, tell me, what did he mean, the monster is to ride with the sun? Robert said that to me once when he was alive. There's an old Chicago legend, Captain, which declares that preceding every great world catastrophe, a figure in the shape of a giant Gila monster is seen riding across the heavens on the face of the sun. And, my friend, the monster is forecast to ride again. Then... Then a great catastrophe is near at hand? That is so. We know not what. All we know is what we have told. Is there no appeasing the wrath of these people? Never, Doctor. So long as the secret of their ancient city is endangered, men shall die. 
Already thousands have died to preserve the sinister secret. Who can say how many are yet to lay down their lives? Hey, uh, I got an idea. No, oh, we oh. forgot about you, Skip. How do you feel? Oh, throat's a little raw, otherwise okay. Hey, but I've been thinking. Look, if Miss Santos can use that crystal to show us people who are, well, who are no longer with us, why can't we use it to unveil the activities of the enemies? You don't understand, Skip. Our knowledge of this phenomenon is imperfect. We've not yet sufficient mastery of it to command its use. We believe we understand a few fundamental laws of mysticism, but so very few it's pitiful. Dr. English, do you not agree with me that it is time to take Captain Friday and Senor Turner into our confidence? Tell them all that we know. They have thrown their lot with us. It is only fair. I don't wish to draw my friends into this net. We're already in. Isn't that right, Skip? After what I've been through? <laughs> and what an initiation. See, Doctor, they are in as much danger as we. Even more danger, for they are handicapped by complete mystification as to what it is all leading to. Well, what do you think, Judith? Father, we need Captain Friday and Skip. Need them badly. It's all settled, Judith. Skip and I sail with you. Now, Mrs. Santos, tell us, what's your next move? Our next move, and the next, and the next, were ever so carefully planned. Long, long ago. I don't get it. You say that whatever move we make has long ago been decided upon? Understanding will come, my son. To each of us, there has been given a part to play. Dr. English, you tell the story. Something more than a year ago, we came upon our first clue to the mysterious city. We were returning from Mongolia. On an inspiration from Robert, we detoured to the monastery of Kang Ho in Tibet. Our audience with the Lama was brief. We were led to a cell near the roof of the massive monastery, and the Lama was seated on the floor in a patch of sunlight spinning a prayer wheel. He thrust into Robert's hands a package secured with many seals and sighed as if with relief. Then he said, My children, you have come in time. Carry this package to your own country. Guard it with your lives. It holds your destinies. Perhaps the destiny of all mankind. Go at once. The dread menace of the sacred city of the living dead reaches even here. Beware. The monster rides with the sun again. Later, we learn that the very day that we received the package... The Dalai Lama was murdered. Well, for jumping up and down, what was in the package, in a way? A piece of tanned human skin on which had been painted a crude map. Likewise, there were seven pieces of ancient parchment, utterly blank, but which brought forth ancient Sanskrit characters when applied to heat. Robert knew Sanskrit. What did he make of them? No man will ever know, Captain. We read the documents twice, then Robert burned them and destroyed the ashes with acid. After that, we both said prayers to erase from our minds the memory of what we'd read. Man, it must have told some story. And the map? Is the one and only way to the sacred city in the Chilean jungle. The city of the sun. The dwelling place of the ancient Chakota Brotherhood. There is little more to tell that is not legendary. And these legends are dangerous. For they deny all the accepted theories of the rise of mankind. You really have got hold of something. Well, I'm way over my head already. Today... Man vaguely realizes that there are forces and powers in the world just outside his grasp. Mysticism is the general name given these powers. That's where the ancient Dakota priests come in. See, in the beginning, man had the use of these powers without reservation. But man, with his pig-headedness, used them to his own advantage and the detriment of civilization. Result? Chaos and red death. The legend says that the gods, to restore peace and happiness, wiped out men's memories of these great gifts. But they did not steal our heritage of mysticism. No, they put these powers in the hands of a faithful line of priests, the descendants of who are now to be found in the lost sacred city. And these priests we're fighting are in possession of all these powers? Yes, to cherish and preserve against the day when man is perfect enough to be allowed the use of them for the good of the world. No fooling, Miss Santos. Is this legend or true? What is legend but a truth beautified by the coloring of time? But the wickedness of these priests. Haven't they cold-bloodedly killed Roberto Santos, Robert English, and hundreds of others? Those who have studied the problem have wondered, Captain. After all, is it wickedness? These priests have exercised a powerful influence upon men. They have functioned as a sort of stabilizing force controlling events and destinies at will. They have controlled 
checked or encouraged the ambitions of man. They have prevented wars and caused wars. Hey, Miss Saros. And now you understand something of the power of these men of the sacred city. <gasps> Look, huh? out the window. Eyes huh? are watching us. Well, well, Look, hey, what is Keep it? Keep still, what everyone. Is... Kick over the lamp. Yeah. Everyone on the floor. Madre de Dios, tiene compasión. Stick with me, Skip. We'll crawl to the window and try to grab this guy. When he doesn't beat it. Did you ever see eyes like that? Man. All right, you throw up the window and I'll try to grab him. Ready? Yeah. Get him. What in blazes? Hey, give me some light. Yes, light. Light. There, there, there you are. <laughs> Captain Friday. How funny. It's only an owl. Well, I scare for nothing. Just a harmless owl. Harmless owl? My son, among the chicotas, the owl is the symbol of death. Hey. For each one of us. Death. The Brotherhood of the Living Dead have placed the brand of death on five people. The further adventures of Captain Friday and Skip Turner in their fight against the ancient mysticism of Jakota comes to you next week. You are listening to Adventures by Morse.